today. Decided to wait it out a little bit and make sure my cis white male eyes weren't uh, tarnished or influenced in any way, shape, or another. And really wanted to see it for myself. And I did, of my own volition, no arm twisting necessary. And enjoyed it. A lot of it made more sense than originally thought. Like having it take place during the First World War, which makes sense since that would probably be when the Amazons would have been interested in protecting mankind. And it all works out. In fact, opting to do that instead of having all the, you know, pseudo and super science of the fantastical world of World War II also gave it a nice new vibe and made it slightly more amusing, especially for cynical sycophants like myself with my slightly nihilistic attitude, especially when Gal Gadot playing Diana, who isn't referenced as Wonder Woman in any way, shape, or form. It's great. Except every time do a shot for hearing some scruffy old Brit go, Who is this woman in here? Blah, blah, blah. Yo, who is this woman speaking up? Who is this woman over here with the sword? What, what is this woman doing? You know, like, like, I love that there's that subdued disdain because, oh, jolly old England, turn of the century and whatnot. Right, 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 right. But, <laughs> but still, it was very enjoyable. Chris Pines, perfect for Steve Trevor, handles it very well it's not it's not too much of a job for him you know, he filled in perfectly he didn't channel kirk in any way so there wasn't a lot of this you know captain kirk nuance like he was steve trevor and there's a lot of tact in it gal Gadot is not you know super naive yeah she's shocked by a lot of stuff within the world of man and her lead in handled insanely well you know the backstory not hammered in too much there are some tropes that get brought up and of course they're turned on their ear because you know it's a strong female character and a lot of people say that but honestly i look at it as you know oh some tropes you know, I try to look beyond sex, even though everyone expects me not to, because I apparently fill out the demographic of neckbeard. Couldn't be any farther from the truth, but what the fuck ever, right? And everything about it is done very well. The the choreography, the combat choreography is excellent. It's got it still has that classic war vibe, but having it be world war one shows a more natural tone as opposed to the the stigma we have with world war two that immediately all germans are evil when that's further from the truth obviously as in in world war one you know, hopefully the war to end all wars which is what intrigues Diana to join Trevor on his mission. Which, you know that, that epic battle where you saw all the Amazons fighting all the Germans? That's like the first 15 minutes. Like, the moment Steve Trevor lands in Themyscira, not by choice, by force, he gets tailed by, by a group of Germans. And of course, they're going after him because he is the enemy, not because... Not because... You know... It's Chris Pine, but you know it's still it's still handled well, and not a lot of cheesecake. A lot of people would expect there to be cheesecake. You know, oh Gal Gadot, former model. You know, she's she's athletic. Yeah, I mean she's wearing next to nothing because they bring up you know combat purposes. And oddly enough, there's a lot of references and nods to other aspects of Wonder Woman that some people would actually prefer to be forgotten. Like, 
she kind of becomes interested in fashion, but it's done once again in functionality. Like, she tries on some, some outfits early on, which costuming, on point. She goes, how is one supposed to fight in this? To which, Etta Candy, the actress who played her, her name escapes me, and I'm sure I'm going to get ripped apart in the comments for, for not knowing that before before coming on. But I mean, the two names I need to know were Chris Pine and Gal Gadot. Because they're, they're the two leads. Everyone expects that. But, you know, she brings up, you know, well, I mean, we're, we're going for the votes. So we usually use common sense and delicacy and things like that. But I'm not one for good pair of fisticuffs. <laughs> So, they have that. And they do the whole ragtag team at one point because, you know, they're trying to reach the end of the war, so they're trying to reach peace. But Gal Gadot is hell-bent on finding Ares, who is clearly the cause of all war that's going on. You know, this is the grandest war, so clearly Ares has a hand in it. So... Trevor makes a promise to get her to the front, and if she can find Ares, you know, kill him, and hopefully end everything like that. And he's, you know, he hopes that he's wrong and she's right. That maybe, that maybe something is driving men absolutely nuts to want to kill this many people so quickly across this many countries and this many continents. And he gets his own team together, which... I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a nod to Sergeant Rock or maybe the Losers. Because they do the whole multicultural thing. And a lot of people might go, oh, that's that's clearly one, a knock towards you know, Captain America. And, you know, oh, it, it's bending to the Tumblrverse. Newsflash! When they were doing war comics in the late 40s into early 50s, when they weren't sure if the war was going to end or not, they were doing the multicultural thing back then. Yeah, it might have been a little more tasteless. Like, if there had been a black guy on the team, his name might have been, you know, his nickname might have been, you know, Boxcars or, you know, Bones because, you know, blacks like the dice. I still don't know where that comes from. I've never, never had a black friend or known a black friend to be into craps or any dice based game aside from DD. But, you know, you know, if they if they had a Scots, you know, they might have named him Tartan or Haggis McGee, which thankfully is not the case here. And lo and behold, they actually have a Native American who lasts longer than five minutes on screen. Yeah, his nickname's Chief, and yes, there is a smoke signal reference in there. But above all else, he's actually given character and depth and treated with a, you know, much more respect than you know, the poor bastard that played Slipknot in Suicide Squad. It It is straightforward with a lot of the story, you know, obviously, you know, Ares is on the battlefield, but who is Ares? Lots of red herrings. Uh, Dr. Poison isn't as well established as I thought she would be. There's not much of a face-off between her and, and Wonder Woman. Or Diana, because thankfully they don't reference her as Wonder Woman in any way, shape, or form. But, you know, there there is the battle with Ares. There are a few twists, a lot of red herrings, thankfully. And they also have the moment where she thinks about giving up because all she sees is war. That maybe all men are meant to hunt and kill, and maybe that's all they're good for, and... And that's it, you know, why do I keep fighting this? But, you know, Steve shows his dedication. Like, you know, I, I brought this up in an earlier video that the reason why she was drawn to Steve wasn't because he was a man. It was because he was a soldier dedicated to actual protection. You know, he wants to stop the war. He doesn't want to keep fighting. You know, yes, he's shooting that guy from across the field. But if he doesn't shoot that guy, that guy is going to shoot nine other people. You know, take one, save a thousand. That type of scenario. And just all the whole movie is very well handled. You know, even 
even doing the whole, oh, it's being told through memory. She's looking at a photo from her on the battlefront you know, that's dropped to her by Wayne Industries because it is an antique and is going in the museum that she works at in the Louvre. So it's nice to have her be international because, you know, she's not American enough. The, she came from Themyscira, which is supposed to be Greek. That's about as far from American as you're going to get, you fucking idiots who are bitching about that. Seriously. Nothing about her is supposed to be American aside from the person she works with. She never was American. She wasn't born in America. Yeah, her creator was American, but that's about it. So a lot of what everyone's freaking out about, I, I, I don't understand. It's a fucking movie. It's a work of fiction. Historical fiction at that. And it was well handled. It's a shame it took this long for them to get it right. But to not be completely the other Marvel studio, they don't do a stinger at the end. There's no after credits scenario. And I waited. I almost pissed myself waiting. I'd killed my drink like four times. So I was holding on. I was waiting for this. You know, whether it was comical or serious or whatever. Nah. No. Nah, nothing. Nothing whatsoever. But everyone got some good screen time. All the characters were well developed. There were some twists. I enjoyed that. And I'm definitely going to check it out again. This time I won't be looking for all the hints and everything. Like, oh, 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 they might be referencing this. Or, oh, 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 hey, you know, that, that character's name is connected to this group. I'll, I won't have to worry about that. I'm just going to enjoy the movie and not be so goddamn critical about it. Which, I, I don't, you know, it's, it's up to your interpretation if I was insanely critical about it. I enjoyed it. If you don't, that's fine. If you didn't enjoy it because a woman directed it, you can go fuck yourself. If you didn't enjoy it because it's not American enough, grow the fuck up. And you know, if, if you didn't enjoy it because the Nazis were, well, not in it. Because you know, it's a war film, we're fighting Germany, therefore we're fighting Nazis. No, 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 chill the fuck out. The Germans are shown as humans following orders. Just just go go see the movie. You don't like it, you can walk out. Demand a refund, whatever the case may be. If you did enjoy it, let other people know. Fact is, this might be the non-stumbling block that Warner and DC finally have in, you know, trying to play catch up. I don't know why they're even concerned with competing with Marvel. It's a different vibe. It's always been a different vibe. That's the reason why we have two major heavy hitters in the world of comics. But it is always fun to find those Marvel actors who are doing a DC movie. So that's great. Can't wait to see what Idris Elba does if they ever get him in that Green Lantern film or not. But till then... And Torch, as always, phoning it in.